What's up everyone, it's Nightmare Reaps here, bringing you an awesome gameplay of Capture the Flag. Well, it's not that awesome, I guess. Uh, it's just a random game where we're beating the, the Raging Girls. <laughs> uh, I love the Raging Girls, they never stop raging. Um, but I'm not really going to talk about the gameplay today, I'm just uploading it because I am I needed a long game, so I found this one and I was like, oh, it's the Raging Girls, you know, might as well. And it kind of ties into the topic that I wanted to talk about. But judging by the title, how to be good at Black Ops 2. Now, I'm just going to say there's a lot of things I'm going to go over in this video. So be bear with me. Uh, you know, I'm not really good at this. And I'm not that good at Black Ops 2. So I'm going to just tell you a few tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. From the first, but well, it's been out for almost a month now. Three weeks to a month, whatever. Um, Alright, so let's get right into this. I think the most important thing in learning when you like especially if this is the first call of duty you ever play the very first thing you want to look out for or not look out for but pay attention to is the radar at the top left corner i know it's kind of hard you know to keep looking back and forth but every now and then you know once you turn a corner to reload you know push that square button and then look up at the radar make sure to see if there aren't any red dots around you that are going off or any f just anything that's on the radar that's not supposed to be there or you can tell, like, for example, right now, my whole entire team is on the right side of the map. Obviously, the enemy team is going to be on the middle or the left side of the map. So after a while of playing Call of Duty, you kind of already know where the enemy is going to be, judging by the spawns of the map. This map's pretty decently sized. Uh, you know, it's pretty big. It's a little unfairly made. That doesn't make sense, but... You, you get an idea of where the enemies will be, so always keep your eye on the radar. That's a really big tip I can give you. You know, the radar helps a lot, and that's, yeah, keep, always keep your eye on, keep your, keep, always keep your eyes on it. Um, another really, really big thing, which is obviously is the guns and the equipment that you use. All right, depending on the type of player that you are or that you're trying to be, if, if you don't know, like, again, I'm... Obviously, I'm you know making this video for the new Call of Duty players that are trying to look for tips and tricks to improve their game style, their accuracy, that sort of thing. All right, first things first, you want to figure out what type of player you are. If you are a rusher or you are more of a you know laid back, not a camper per se, but more of a chill back and wait for the enemy type of guy. And okay. One to tip number one to know which type of player you are. If you're the type of player that you're like, damn, I just want to get out there and I want to kill some noobs, and you're, you're most likely going to be a rusher. Even though you're going to be antsy, you're probably just going to be really excited about the game. But I'm pretty sure you, you're going to be wanting to run around. But at the same time, you never know. Maybe you won't like it. Maybe you'll turn into a laid back player. Or, you know, after a while, you'll turn into both. But this, these are some tips, more tips and tricks. Obviously, this whole video is of tips and tricks based commentary on how to make you a better player woohoo <laughs> um if you will be a runner i definitely recommend you to use guns that will let you move freely across the map uh smgs or shotguns would be my number one choice and with a light you know like a pistol or the bow for example in black ops 2 they let you move around quicker and you you know it's it's easier to get around the map pretty much the, the speed when you're a runner is number one it, it just helps it, it really does and uh guns and black ops 2 i'd recommend the pdw the mp7s and eh, it's all right unless you want to spray with spray <laughs> unless you want to spray with it with the laser sight uh the msmc is a great gun the scorpion's an overpowered great gun as well <laughs> but you, you know what i mean then if you're more of a laid back type of player You'd go, obviously, with the assault rifles, with the light machine guns. And then if you're a really laid-back player, you can use a sniper rifle. Or you can be one of those players that's beasting up and you can use a sniper rifle while you're running and capturing flags. You never know. Hey, anything's possible in Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, another really big tip when you're trying to figure out what type of player you are is pay attention to your sensitivity. That's one of the most difficult things that I had to do when, when I started playing Call of Duty back in COD 4 that... It didn't. It didn't feel right until you know you ha you have to mess around with your sensitivity and see. Oh, does this feel right? Does this feel too much or is this too low? Because sometimes it's it's either you know some people play on ten, some people play on two. You know, the lower, in my opinion, the lower the sensitivity, the greater the accuracy is for your gun. But 
And I just killed the guy with the bouncing Betty. I'm sorry I got distracted. Um, the greater the accuracy for your gun, the lower, the higher. The, but it, it has like a back and forth. So like the lower the sensitivity year is, the lower your the lower you have your sensitivity the higher the accuracy will be but the higher the sensitivity the lower the accuracy will be depending on your fingers but the higher your twitch will be and what a twitch is is the amount of time that it takes you to respond to the enemy player as in getting turned on uh, shooting the trigger winning your gun battles who gets to pull the trigger first that sort of thing so you always want to mess around with your sensitivity and your um default uh control Controls actually like default or tactical or invert or that sort of thing. But other than the controls and the guns, I think that's about it. Uh, next, next, next. Um, yeah. So I uh, already went about runners having different types of guns in the mids and the d defensive players, uh, that sort of thing. Another really, really big thing is uh, what type of equipment you run. So uh, what I would recommend. If you were running, and not necessarily for capture the flag, but if you're one of those running for domination or team tactical, I don't know, kill confirmed, you can, um, I love C4s for running. Those things, C4s, you throw them around the corner, you know, someone catches you reloading, you double tap on square and they blow up. It's awesome. Good times. We've all, we've all done that every once in a while. And I want you to learn that, you know, throw a C4. They, oh, that's a bouncing Betty. Um, you know, it's either C4s and, uh. What else is in Black Ops 2? They have these little sensors that you can throw that will let the enemy show up if they don't have cold-blooded on your radar. That should help you out to see where the enemy is at all times while in the line of sight of the sensor. Um, if you're more of a mid to defensive player, I definitely recommend like a Claymore or a Bouncing Betty. Definitely with the shock charges. Because back in the past Call of Duties, what we used to do is we used to call stun checks. Which pretty much is you, you throw a stun into a room... And if doesn't get a hit marker, obviously the room is clear. There's no one in that room. If you do get a hit marker, you kind of get an idea where the player is depending on your map knowledge, which I'll get into a little later. And if, you know, stun checks are crucial, especially in Capture the Flag. So think of the shock charges as a stationary, endless stun check until you never die i mean because you could place it down behind a corner somewhere if it goes off you remember where it's at you're like oh there's an enemy back there you know that, that sort of thing it really it's really helpful especially when you're watching the flag and it comes in handy really really like that's yeah and uh, what else on the equipment list is there important um i guess that's that's it for the you know the for the beginning call of duty players um woohoo uh, <laughs> Uh, kill streaks. I'll think I'll say. Actually, let's talk about kill streaks now. Black Ops 2. They're called score streaks, and in my opinion, the faster the runner or the faster the player, the lower the kill streak. And what that means is that if you're a capture the flag runner, for example, you would run UAV, RCXD, care package. You know, three simple kill streaks or a hunter killer drone, which I think is 550 points to get that thing. And the lower the better because you're not going to be really stacking up kills you're going to be running you're going to be capturing flags you might get one or two kills here and there so you want to get something low and something that would kind of help out your team and the benefit on the long run and same thing with you know when you go up higher to midfielders you might run something a little higher like a lightning strike or a hellstorm missile or uh, a dragonfly little helicopter thingy thing that you fly and you <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm stupid like that. Don't worry about it. Um, and then your defensive players, if you want, uh, you can either run, you know, lower kill streaks or higher kill streaks. It, it's all up to you as a player. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you my personal thoughts and my opinions. These are all my opinions. But anything's possible in Call of Duty, as I said before. So you can run low kill streaks as a defensive player. It all depends on what type of player you are, and it will take a very, very long time. So. And another really huge thing about all of this stuff is that it takes patience. It really does. We all get frustrated playing all these type of first-person shooters. Like right now, me and KB were getting raped at Capture the Flag. It was only us two. We were getting, like, you have no idea how bad we were doing right now. And it gets frustrating. It really does. But you just got to be patient. You got to say, okay, what can I do to change this to make me a better player? Uh, go back and watch the kill cam. Go back and 
think about, oh, if I would have went this way instead of that way, or if I would have took a different route. Because you know what they say about insanity. The definition of insanity is doing the exact same thing every time and expecting different results. So you have to switch it up a bit. You know, run a different route. Uh, wait a little bit before you run out the door. You know, throw a flashbang outside before you run and see if anyone's out there. Um, don't call in your kill streaks right away. That's another huge thing. Oh my God, I touched on this back in Modern Warfare 2. When you earn, like for example, MW2, when you earn a Predator missile, you get so excited, like, oh my God, I want to call in a Predator missile, like, ah, orgasm in my pants. But at the same time, you, you can be in the middle of a gunfight, or you can be standing in the middle of nowhere. My recommendation would be to wait a little bit, go in some, a safe room, you know, maybe pick up a, a kill or two away, build up your kill streak again, and then once you're in a safe place that you know you'll be safe, or that you think you will anyway, call in your kill streak. And RCX, RCXDs are so fun to drive, I swear I'd be drifting in those things, but off topic. So... Be patient. Be really, really patient. You're not going to learn this in a day. It's going to take you at least two to three weeks to start getting comfortable. And another big thing about becoming a good player in Black Ops 2 is you have to learn the maps. You have to, have to, have to, have to learn the maps. I'm not saying learn every single corner. I'm just saying get familiar with it. You know, Google, Google images every single map and see the routes, see the spawn. So you get an idea of where the enemy will be once you start playing. And I'm telling you, it will help. Go into a private match in Black Ops 2 and play with some bots on, like, recruit or if you want, you know. Just to get an idea of how how the game is, how what it feels like for them to rush you a certain way, what what routes to take if you get cornered and what I don't know, just just do some research. It will pay off. And I'm telling you, I can't stress this enough. Be patient with your game. Please be patient. Don't go out and pull up I think it was this uh it was like some british kid with mw2 he raged so hard he was punching his wall and crying and his knuckles were bleeding and then at the end it was hilarious because he was drinking milk and he had like a milk mustache and it had nothing to do with anything and he's like oh i got milk on my mustache because i don't give a fuck and i don't care anymore but premium example what you just saw on the screen right there i'm playing defensively watching our flag these kids are rushing the flag trying to you know get past rapes but it's not gonna happen so they got the d and i stole that phrase from kyle kyle you suck whatever <laughs> i'm just kidding kyle um and so i went over map knowledge went over the guns went over the type of player the sensitivity the radar oh let's go over the sound so when I first started playing Call of Duty, uh, all right, little let, let me give you a little backstory here. There was a point in my life where every birthday party I would go over to a friend's house. I know this has nothing to do with the topic, but I just want to give you a little backstory and some time to talk. I only got about oh, I only got two minutes left. Nice. Um, okay, so I used to go to this friend's house after my birthday, and that's where I found out found out about COD4. He used to play COD4 on his TV without a headset. Now, the headset does make a huge difference let me tell you why when you play with the TV without a headset you hear the sounds but you don't hear the sounds uh, and let me elaborate a little bit on that you hear what's going on on the TV but you you know you can barely hear your footsteps you can barely hear the gunshots on the other side of the map you can barely hear where the enemy's at with the headset especially oh please don't laugh at me I fell at driving the RCXD at this little point of the clip Oh my god, Reeves, what's going on? Oh, <laughs> fail. Um, and he gets shot. So, um, the difference between using a headset and just playing off a regular TV is just, it's its incredible. It's so, it, it's just game changing. With the headset, it's like being in the game. You can hear the footsteps, especially if you're using dead silence. Uh, and I recommend using dead silence because that perk, it silences your footsteps. And you don't hear anything. You just hear the enemy pretty much. And uh, like I said before, keep your you know eyes on the radar to make sure it's not your friendlies that you're hearing in the radar. You turn around and shoot the wrong person. And I, I guess that's pretty much it. The, the game came to an end. I hope I hit on enough things to help you become a better player, at least in one topic. Um, I, I'm sorry if I missed anything. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Uh, Nightmare Reaps out